the, the success of the summer reading clubs, um, you know, that of course is uh, funded by the Friends, but just the, the number is astonishing. Yeah. You know, 1,816 kids doing the summer reading club. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's great. It would and be nice to have that connection to the books, just a little something. I, well, thank you. Um, <laughs> we in the past have noted that there's no mention yeah. of our contribution. Yeah. There, no. Well, there is. There's, there's a mention of, of the collaborative community group. So that was uh, last year, mm -hmm. remember. But nothing of, to me and our board and volunteers, the extent of how much we contribute. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. That's would you love like to have that number in, or or would you like to have the programs highlighted that you? Um, well, it could be, it could both. That could be an online. I think you might want to say we friends, and then you could go do that. Yeah. And yeah. you click. And I don't know. Like, you know, this is all things. You know, maybe right. not get it right the first time, but you know, sort of splitting between the paper. Right. And so this, yeah, this. I think this might be a, sort of a transition year that we mm -hmm. go from the full printed mailed. But it would be alone. nice to have just some reference to books down under in the mm -hmm. paper version. Friends, yeah, yeah. You know, and right, that, and, yeah. and, you know, these are the programs, the Friends Finance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do you guys do an annual report? Yeah. Oh, it's, it, it's, it's a two-pager, and it's oh. in your... Yeah, um, it's in our packet. Yeah, yeah, packet. yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was a fun, it was a fun page. Basic. Can we link to it in our... Right here. I'm not sure if it's online. Joan, is it online? Um, it is. It is. Okay. Um, actually, not at the moment. I haven't forwarded it to Stephen yet, but we have in the past. Because, yeah. Um, Maybe we could link to it. Mm -hmm. We could link to that. Also. Sure. Sure. We, we we have that. Yeah. No, I'm. Oh. I'm sure it's in here. But thank you. Yeah. Well, the nice thing about online, we can link to our budget. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, right. for all those right. you know, we don't need to print statistics it all, but, uh, yeah. nerds People out there who really. really <laughs> I think, I think, I, yeah, I think it's one you know? thing we've all we've all touched on today in yeah. this conversation is the fact that that'll. The bulk of the people will probably want just two pages of information, and but right. there are many people that are interested in more. And then by having the online component, like you said, we can have all the information and more that anybody who wants more. Right, can, and then it access. lives on beyond yeah, this, and, um, and off the shelf. Mm -hmm. People, because it'll be there all year round. It'll be there. Yeah, and this yeah, yeah and this can be printed out as again a starting point for anybody at the library who wants to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Start with it. So. Already. Okay. Um, Maybe the communications committee <clears throat> can take a yes. you, know, yeah, we do. you know can collaborate on yeah. that as well. Um, legislative breakfast. Uh, Dan and I both and Heather attended the uh, legislative breakfast. Um, we didn't have new chairs the first day of school for them. They were back to school that day. Um, <coughs> But we had uh, District 37, District, District 39. Um, one, I think it was oh. so Laura Fine's office was Robin Gables, LA. Uh, Robin, Robin Gables, Gables. Yeah. 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 Um, talk, uh, and um, they were both there. Jan was there. Oh, Jan's you're right. Assistant. You're right. Kevin Archie right. came, Jan's assistant yeah. office, Robin's And then office. we had one of the, um, I'm sorry, did you say the part? The yeah, commission? Mike Kevin uh, and then uh, Jan Schakowsky's staffer assistant. came. Yeah. And right, and then someone from the, um, Cook County. Uh, Larry's office. Yes. yes. Right. So um, so the schools brought us up to date. And once again, um, for the benefit of people here and our listening audience, because um, he certainly threw it out to the public of the District 37 of what to do. In fact, I was sort of explaining it to Heather, the parcel of real estate just immediately to the west of Marie Murth Murphy, they they don't have any need for it as a school and haven't had for really quite some time and they've had tenants but they're trying to come up with a plan for that. You mean the small building that has um is a, a nursery school. Was the nursery school but yeah. they, they used to have Nutria Central but I think that moved the Nutria you know west. So they they just don't so they definitely toss that out there as mm -hmm. you know looking for suggestions. You know they selling it, building single family homes, it's zone for homes, mm -hmm. so um, somebody wants the space as is. It, 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 we've been, they have not yet been able to come up with a solution with that. But they talked a lot about the school. You, your kids went to Avoca. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Then we spoke. Um, Heather, of course, introduced 
you know, welcomed everybody. And then I spoke on the fact that we had a new director. Didn't know for sure everybody had met Heather. Uh, we're starting strategic plan, uh, landscaping, um, and those were basically my messages for the group. Um, thank the village for talking to us about the parking lot. Um, District 39, they would talk about the new learning commons, the library space, and I'm sure our staff know a lot about that more than I do. I mean, it's really one of the areas where we intersect a lot with them. Mm -hmm. Park Board talked about Gilson. Gilson. Right. <laughs> Gilson. Gilson and, and paddle paddle boards. boards. <laughs> so they're adding two paddle boards. Yes. Yeah. And th those are the main things that they were focusing on and sort of talked about where they are in their planning process and they're still planning. Mm -hmm. uh, the village talked about waters and sewers mm -hmm. um, and streets, street repair, try how they are trying to accelerate. Uh, that they feel as though that that had been sort of a deferred expenditure item and they were, at a certain point you can't do that anymore and I think we would all agree to that um, as a resident. Um, they also were delighted, they weren't there, but they were delighted to, um, with the recent promotions in both the fire and the, the police department, mm -hmm. um, those were internal promotions and they thought that was a good thing, so that was their message. Um, who was, who was there from the village? From the village? Um, uh, Bill Belinsky, Tim Frenzer, and Joe Curzon. Uh, from... Please bring your materials to the circulation desk uh, for checkout. Mike, thank you. Mike. Mike Raymond. Okay. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. um, also, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I just it's curious. always a great... Um, group to listen to what people are doing. We sat around in a square this time. Um, it's something that we should continu continue to do. And we've done it sort of once a year. Maybe we should do it more than once a year. I don't know. I mean, people's schedules get busy, but, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, Jan, I appreciate you letting me go. It was, I thought it was awesome. And it was um, something where I, I'd like to do it more often if you have to notice it up to let more people go, then I think we should. But I really think there's something to having board members have candid conversations and, you know, I don't go to their it's a whole It's a whole different environment. Yeah. yeah and you learn a lot more. Yeah, I really do. So I thought it was great if we could do something more than annually. I'd certainly be enthusiastically in favor of that. Um, but it just, it struck, you know, the conversation just struck me and I, I raised it then and I, I wanted to share it with the board. Um, you know, my personal view is that, you know, there isn't really a one municipal database of all the services offered, you know, like to kids, like we're a huge service provider and so is the park district and so mm -hmm. are the schools. And it'd be nice to have one big catalog of all the things that all the governments that are essentially coterminous are offering. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think there's yeah. a lot of opportunities for more collaboration and I hope we, um, maybe, maybe we initiate convening more board members together to have those sorts of creative conversations. Mm -hmm. But it was great. Thanks for letting me go. Sure. Anytime um, at 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, director's report. Yes. There's still things left here. We've sort of covered a wide range of things. But, there's, mm -hmm. but wait, there's more. Mm -hmm. Wait, there's more. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have a lot of changes. Uh, it's exciting. I promoted Stephen mm -hmm. Bull to uh, manager of digital services. Um, he was our virtual services librarian, and um, he his duties had grown over time. Mm -hmm. And I, I just we've talked about this before. I feel like um, moving our technology planning forward is essential, and we need someone who's able to help us think about that in new creative ways. He is going to be responsible for the f for the public facing end of technology. We'll continue to have um, 
our network services department work on the infrastructure and the systems administration part of technology, but this allows us to blend those in a new way, um, particularly when we talk about technology planning, how to use mobile tech in the future. Um, we want to rethink our computer lab in new ways um, so that it is more of a collaborative uh, learning environment in some ways. Uh, we want some more digital creation tools, creativity suites, that's the Apple computers, things like that. Uh, but also, um, we've talked about doing smaller computer pods throughout the building, more mm -hmm. like a learning commons kind of style mm -hmm. of delivery. Mm -hmm. So that's something we're talking about with space planning. We're talking about computer classes and how we can expand our repertoire and bring in more experts and more staff members and the community to, to really um, deliver uh, cutting edge technology classes that we want to be able to do for emerging technology. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about having a technology um, try it before you buy it kind of thing where when you have something new and cool come out a lot of times people um, want to try it at the library <laughs> before they commit uh, things like robotics that's a great way to do that so there's just and we want to uh, sync up with what the schools mm -hmm. are doing in their curriculum so if if they're using a particular um, software design program or engineering program or stem skills that they're trying to teach we want to know what that is Mm -hmm. so that the kids can practice it at the library. So they learn it in school, but they might only have a little bit of time in their classroom to, to play with it. So this allows us to really do a whole lot more of, of that blending. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited about that. Um, we'll, we'll hire his replacement, who will have an expert in teen services. Uh, that is another area that, you know, there's a lot more we can be... Uh, growing and doing, so I'm excited about that. So when, um, what does that look like, an expertise in teen services? Because mm -hmm. if, when you go to any of the conferences, that's the hardest group to capture. Mm -hmm. It is. So I'm That's why curious. you need an expert. <laughs> but, but I'm just curious, what does that expertise <laughs> look like in, in terms of 14 priority. years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You took it on. You know, teen, teen services librarians, um, often they do both. They do both adult services and teen services, as well as emerging young adults. Mm -hmm. There's that, you know... Uh, a lot of times mm -hmm. uh, here in WOMED as well, kids go away to college, but then they come back when they graduate and they're here for a couple years and so um, before they launch into their careers and things like that. So we want to be able to provide services for that demographic as well. Um, so like our Maker uh, After Dark programming is a great example of that where we tried it this summer. We got a lot of 20-somethings. And people that nobody thought was regulars that we'd never seen before. Um, you know, so I, that's the kind of thing we want to be able to, to do more of. We want to increase our teen volunteer program, particularly over the summer, because it looks great on a college resume. And we want to we wanna make sure that we are building new citizens. And that one, or are uh, we like trying to integrate with New Trier at all? Yeah, exactly. Like we wanted, we we would like to do more yeah. uh, if we had the staff to go to New Trier, which we currently don't. But this would allow us to do that. Right. I mean, like they've got a library too, right? So yeah. So we work with mm -hmm. their media specialists yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one thing I think would be interesting yeah. talking about working with the schools' curriculums. I think a lot of schools adopted one-to-one -one iPad, um, both yeah. in the independent schools and the public schools, and I. I'm not really sure what the evaluation is a few years in, because I've, you know, as a parent, I've seen it and seen what somehow sometimes it works better than others, and um, sometimes it's very uneven and, and even classroom to classroom. But I think the one-to-one -one iPad, just seeing, is that a staying thing or what is the newest thing? Right. Um, well, part of it, yeah, my understanding is they're going to continue it, at least for this school year, but mm -hmm. we want to make sure staff is at those meetings and right. that we are collaborating and we're finding out ahead mm -hmm. of time. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, so those kids will be in here. Right. What, mm -hmm. do, what do we need to know? Right. We do also, um, we requested that they put the OverDrive app on their iPads. 
so that kids could get e-books mm -hmm. at the schools. Mm -hmm. So we do things like that as well to try to integrate it um, more. I know, because I think we always think of the working with the, the younger kids, but think again, the kids can just kind of fall off the radar when they become teens and, you know, doesn't have to be that way. So. Yeah, and it could be something as simple as, you know, when the English teachers come out with their reading list for the teenagers. Right. We could come up with our digital shelf on our e on our mm -hmm. ebook platform mm -hmm. that's right. specifically for New Trier's summer reading. So it's that right. kind of thing mm -hmm. we want to do great for of. the, oh, I forgot, I need to do it tomorrow at 10 o'clock at night. Because a lot of times that you don't get all your English books at the beginning of the year, you get them as the year goes yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so the teacher will tell you, and then your kid will tell you at 10 o'clock at night, I need this book by tomorrow, right. you know. <laughs> so, so if, if we're talking more and if yeah. we're communicating more, mm -hmm. we can... And they could, you could say, oh, yeah, you can download it. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can have it ready. Exactly. Chapter. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, we're also having another full-time youth services librarian. That is an area of, of growth as well as uh, early childhood learning and outreach. Absolutely in Wilmette where 40% of our family, uh, of our population has children under the age of 18 living in their household. That is, is that right? huge. So that means, you know, early childhood education, uh, you know, kids in general and children's mm -hmm. services needs Do to grow. Do we have 